Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be doing a test on the Xbox One S to see which Wi-Fi is better, the 2.4 GHz frequency or the 5 GHz frequency. Now, the basic difference between the two is that the 5 GHz frequency is less congested so there should be less interference and also it allows more bandwidth. The problem is is that with range it doesn't travel as well as a 2.4 gigahertz. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be picking four locations in my house both near and far away and then I'm going to be making a note of the results. I'm going to be doing a three tests on each frequency in each location and then we're going to take an average and see what the results are at the end. So first of all let me show you where the router is in the house and then the locations. Now I'm from the UK so I call this a router. I appreciate that if you're from the States and other areas you're going to know it as a router. Whenever you hear me refer to it as router in the video I mean router for you guys. Now with this one here I've got it set up so I've got a 2.4 gigahertz channel and a 5 gigahertz channel that I can select individually so I've set them both up as separate channels for the purpose of the video. So basically as you can see here this is going to be the nearest one because it's just a couple of meters away. Then I'm going to set up the Xbox One S in this room here and this is going to be the front room this is approximately six meters away. I'm also going to set it up in the back room. Now the back room is an extension so it's got a couple of outside walls so it's going to be hard for the signal to get through here. This is only about 10 meters away but the location on this is hard for the signal to get to. And then I've also chosen a back bedroom upstairs. So the reason I've chosen these locations is because they would mimic real life locations that you guys would be setting it up. And it's going to be interesting to see what frequency works the best in different areas. So this is going to be the last one here. So what I'm thinking is going to happen, I haven't done this test before, but I'm thinking that nearby the 5 gigahertz is going to be better than the 2.4 gigahertz, and I think far away the 5 gigahertz will not be as good as the 2.4 gigahertz. So let's have a look and see what the results are going to be. Let me just quickly show you this for how I'm going to do it. This is going to be for the 2.4 gigahertz. I've got the hall, the front room, the back bedroom, and the back room. Now I've put this as the furthest because it's going through so many walls. So although distance wise, there's nothing really in between these two, this one has a lot more obstacles in the way. This has just got one ceiling and a door. This one's got numerous doors, numerous thick outside walls as well. I'm gonna be testing for download, upload, latency, and wireless strength. And I'm gonna do three tests on each of them. And then I'm gonna note the average, and I'm gonna do exactly the same on the five gigahertz as well. And then we're gonna compare the results at the end and see what's the best for each location. So I think when it comes to something like the hallway, I think across the board, five gigahertz is gonna be better. But then I think when it comes to the back bedroom or the back room, I think the 2.4 gigahertz is gonna be better. But it'd be interesting to see, I'm interested to see what the front room is, because that's only six meters away, and that's only gonna go through this little stud wall here. So that hasn't really got much obstacles in the way. So you guys now have a think about what you think is going to be better, 2.4 or 5 in the different locations. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward through all the tests on the video and then we're going to have a look at the end and we're going to compare all the averages and see what's what. The reason I'm doing three tests on each of them is just it's better to get the average rather than just rely on one result. Now just to quickly show you how I'm going to do the very first one and then from then on in I'm going to be fast forwarding through it. So basically with it you need to go down to settings you need to press A, you need to go to all settings, and then you need to go to network, network settings, and then, for example, I've already set up my wireless network for 2.4 gigahertz, because you can see it there in the middle. But when I've done my three tests here, I'm then gonna move on to do three tests on the five gigahertz. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start in the hallway, I'm gonna do three tests on 2.4, then three tests on five gigahertz, then I'm gonna move it to the front room, again, three tests on 2.4, then three tests on five gigahertz. And all I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going down to detailed network stats, and then it's gonna run them. Now, while that's wearing away, what I will say is that I haven't got anything else connected to the internet, so there's nothing downloading anything at the moment, so it should be a fair result. Right, so if you have a look here, it's saying here that I've got 75.08 megabits per second download, uploads 4.64 megabits per second, 
and the latency is 164 milliseconds and wireless strength 100. So I'm going to write those figures down. Now just to tell you what I've got here, although it is a BT router up on the shelf there, I'm actually with Virgin Media and I've got a 70 megabit per second download speed and a 5 megabit per second upload speed. So as you can see there, sometimes I do get slightly more than 70 megabits, or in this case, the Xbox thinks I've got 5 megabits more. Now remember, these are not going to be completely accurate, but as far as the video is concerned, it's accurate because they're just testing against each other it wouldn't be fair now if I was to suddenly do a speed test on a laptop next to it because you're going to be testing to different servers but right now it's going to be a fair test because all the tests are going to be going to the same area so we are doing a fair test between the 5 and 2.4 frequencies right the rest of the video now will just be fast forwarded through Now I'm going to move it into the front room. Okay, so I'm in the front room location now. So let's do all the six tests again. I'm going to keep it on the 5 gigahertz to begin with because that's what we're already on and then I'll move it to the 2.4 for the next three tests. Now I'm going to move it onto the 2.4 gigahertz network. Okay, so that's the front room done. Now I'm going to go up to the back bedroom upstairs. Right, so we have now set up the Xbox One S in the upstairs back bedroom. We are currently on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, so let's do our three tests and then we'll move it over to the 5 gigahertz. So now we're going to move over to the 5 gigahertz network. Okay, so the results are all in there. Now we're going to go to the furthest one away, the one in the back room through all those external walls and see what the results are there. Okay, we're now in the back room, the one with the external wall where it's very hard to get any kind of signal. So let's do the test now and see what we got. Right, okay, so I'm trying to connect to the 5 gigahertz network and it's not even here. So it doesn't come up as an option because we're just too far. It's not so much the distance, there's just too much obstacles in the way with the external walls. So there you go, so unfortunately I can't test in this room for the 5 gigahertz, it's just not there. But I will do the 2.4. So I've got all the results now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the averages and then we'll have a look over it and see if we can analyse anything from it. Okay, so we're back in the hallway now to look at the results. So if we were to set ourselves up in the hallway, so in other words, if you were two meters away from your router, according to the test that I've done, it looks like you're better off going for the five gigahertz network because if you look here on a 2.4, you've got 63 on the down and you've got 4.5 on the up, yet here we've got 73 megabits per second on the down and 4.2 on the up. So the upload's slightly less, but the download's quite a bit more. Now. Interestingly, wireless strength is 100% on both of them because we're so close to the router. And the latency is only 31 milliseconds on the 5 gigahertz, yet it's 76 milliseconds on the 2.4 gigahertz. But I think that's just to this rogue figure here. If you look at both the others, they were very low. So I wouldn't read into this one too much because I reckon if I did another 10 tests, that would come right the way down and it would be similar to this one here. I'm not sure why it was so high on that one. So if you're going very close to the router, they're both gonna perform well, but according to the tests here, 
it would be better to have the 5 gigahertz one. And okay, so we're looking at these figures now, the yellow ones, the front room, the ones that are 6 meters away from the router. So that was this room here. Now if we have a look here at the 2.4 gigahertz, it did well on absolutely everything. So interestingly, it actually seemed to perform better when it was slightly further away from the router than when it was near. So again, there's always going to be a bit of variation. We could do these tests over and over again and it might swap around the other way. But if you have a look here, we've got 75.15 megabits per second download, 4.56 megabits per second upload. We've got latency of only 29 milliseconds and interestingly the wireless strength is 100% again. So even now we've moved away on the 2.4 gigahertz is still 100%. Compare that to the wireless strength of the 5 gigahertz and it's dropped to 86%. Milliseconds is slightly worse. The latency is 31 as opposed to 29 on the 2.4. The download and upload is very similar again. You wouldn't really be able to call it. The download is 75.71 and 4.01 megabits per second upload. So really there, if you're looking at 6 metres away, there's no real difference between the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz. Okay, so we're now in this room here, the back bedroom. So this one is approximately 10 metres away from the router and we're going to be looking at the orange figures here. So this is 2.4 on top and 5 gigahertz at the bottom. Now, interestingly, let's look at the wireless strength. So when it comes to the wireless strength on the 2.4 gigahertz one, it's still up at 60%, which is really good, but yet here we've dropped down to 44%. So you can see that the five gigahertz channel is really struggling with the range. We've dropped a lot of percentage there. Latency is only 32 milliseconds here, but yet on the 2.4 it's coming up as 26 milliseconds and that was consistently low. There's no kind of like weird figures there and these were all a little bit higher. It seems to be performing a little bit worse for the latency. Now as far as the speed is concerned, this is interesting because although we've only got a 44% signal on the 5 gigahertz, check out the average there. It's still 51.17 megabits per second download and 4.73 megabits per second upload. Compare that to here, there's a massive difference. So on the 2.4 gigahertz one here, we've only got 23.49 megabits per second download and 4.17 megabits per second upload. So if you have a look, I mean, that's a huge amount of difference. It's double the speed. So that surprised me. I thought in this back bedroom here, because we're getting quite far away, I would have thought that the 5 gigahertz would have performed a lot worse than the 2.4, but in this instance it hasn't. If you were setting up your Xbox One in this back bedroom, although the wireless strength is definitely weaker, it would still be worth going with the 5 gigahertz one. It is a shame that the latency is more, but remember these are tiny amounts, we're not talking about much here at all. So now let's go down and have a look in the back room. Okay, if you have a look now, we're in this back room. This is the one where I struggle to get the Wi-Fi signal purely because of that external wall there. And if you have a look here on the 5 gigahertz frequency, we didn't even pick it up. It didn't even recognize it at all. So I couldn't connect to anything because it wasn't there to connect to. Yet the 2.4 gigahertz channel, we could connect, but with awful speed. So if you have a look here, 1.75 megabits per second download. We've only got, we're looking at the blue one now, we've only got four, well actually the upload's fine, 4.06 megabits per second upload. Latency surprisingly good, 34 milliseconds. And if you have a look there, you can see the wireless strength is only 36%. So that is interesting. So it just goes to show you, it really depends on where you are in the house to how good the connection is going to be. So a lot of people now moan about their connection and they always blame it on their service provider. But you can see the variation here. It's a lot of it is just purely down to how close to your router you are. So there you go, as you can see, it really will vary depending on how far away you are from your router. It will also vary from house to house and apartment to apartment, depending on the structure of the building. As well as that, Interference from other equipment will also alter these results. But what I would say is if you've got the option, give 5 gigahertz a go because according to my setup anyway, it seems to perform better overall than the 2.4 gigahertz. Now a lot of routers will do this automatically for you 
or some routers you will have to choose between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. The problem with that is if you choose 5 gigahertz only, then you might have other equipment that will fail to connect to the internet. For example, if you've got an old iPod, it's only going to connect up at 2.4 gigahertz. Even the PlayStation 4, the original one, not the slim one or the Pro, but the original, they're only going to connect at 2.4 gigahertz as well. So you might not have a choice in doing this. You might have to stick to the 2.4 gigahertz. But if you've got the option, and if your router doesn't automatically do both of them for you, then look into 5 gigahertz because you might be surprised because you might end up getting a lot more speed than you did when you were on the 2.4 gigahertz network. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.